Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Gamer Disco Podcast. Um, I'm joined uh, by the wonderful Harry. Thanks, Harry. Hi, Harry. How are you doing? Hi, all. Good. Could be better. Could yeah. be better. Yeah, not great with your broken arm. Yes, yeah, so I, I fell over and um, had a fight with some ice and uh, a curb and uh, the curb won. So, yeah. <laughs> not good. And yeah. also, yeah, sorry, mate. And then also we've got uh, lovely Swanee. Who's Hello. Can I say where you are, Swanee, at the moment? Bonjour, oui, oui. You're in France. Swanee's in France, taking a little little breather. Oh. Managed to go oh, away yeah. for a little bit. Um, oh. And we've got our music maestro, Rory. Hey, Rory, how you doing? I'm dandy. Dandy, okay, cool. That's a great word. That's a, that's a good word. Good word, sir. Uh, okay, so let's kick off with gaming news. Over to you, Harry. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. So just announced today is that Sony are buying Bungie for 2.7 billion. You know, pocket change. After Microsoft uh, bought Blizzard for 68 billion and Take Two bought Zynga for 12.7 billion. A lot of uh, acquisitions lately, it seems. Um, Mergers and acquisitions. Things? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> murders and executions, as Patrick Bateman once <laughs> said. Patrick Bateman would say, yeah. I mean, it seems like none of them are being that exclusive, so we'll still get big releases on all the consoles. But uh, uh, I don't know; I feel a bit uneasy. But I don't understand. Yeah, like, I don't know why this is exciting for anyone. I, I, because I just don't really understand, or maybe I just don't care. It's like, does this <laughs> do anything for me? Does this make my life as a gamer improved? Is this better for? employees is this better for the developers uh what does it actually mean apart from just this studio now owns this studio okay now what i i you know it's it's clearly a big hubbub but um i think it'll be a, a little while before things settle down and and things actually people work out exactly what that actually means to them as a consumer, or what it means to the people involved as um, employees. Does does this yeah, mean we'll right. get Halo games on Sony on PlayStation now, or is that? I th- I think to be honest, they were going to consider that at some point anyway. Cross platform yeah. mobility Makes and everything. Sense. I think PlayStation are using Azure servers, which is Microsoft's thing. Yeah. I think just as a note on it, you know, looking at the film industry, I think that's the closest comparison is to say, well, sometimes it works incredibly well, and sometimes. Mm. You know, lots of bad happens. So, I think content-wise for consumers, it's it's perhaps uh, it does limit some of the options, and certainly the formats mm. will be more generic, maybe. But it does also give you a slew of people who then have gone off and done some incredibly creative stuff. So, mm. yeah, we'll come feels like a game of um, poker, really. Um, you know, all the um, big guys are firming up their hands, and um, no one wants to, um, <laughs> you know, show the cards first. Then, you know, game bluff really. Anyway, one one person says, "Right, no one's getting anything. It's all exclusive." Then everyone else was like, exclusive. But if no one does it first, then maybe we'll be okay. Who knows? I think the more important news is New York Times buying Wordle. In a, yeah. <laughs> My mates that will come mental for that. That might actually affect me. <laughs> <laughs> Such a shame. It's a WhatsApp game. group between like twenty guys who you know we've all grown up together, and it's always just funny stories about goatsy and stuff that we share on it. But recently, it's literally just been Wordle. Every morning, I wake up to twenty <laughs> Wordle messages. Well, you'll be thankful to know that goatsy is a six-letter word, so um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. you won't you <laughs> won't see that on Wordle. I haven't played Wordle, so I don't know if that's a thing or not. I well, got today's in two guesses. That's my flex today. Well done. Yes. I thank managed. You, I you. managed a one percent one and one. Yawn. Wow. Yawn. Not today. I'm not driving <laughs> a mini metro. I'm not driving a mini metro. I'm not driving a mini Sorry. metro. <laughs> Sorry, we're being wrong. We should move on. Yes. Okay. So other news. Uh, Steam Deck is coming out February 25th. So if you like consoles and PC stuff, Ooh. there you go. You can do portable PC gaming if you can get your hands on one because they are hard to find, like most consoles these days. Have you you got one? You've got one on order, Harry, haven't you? No, I don't know. I'm not a oh, PC guy. Ah. Still after a PS5, but again, those are hard to track. You know, yeah, even though Christmas nice happened, um, maybe in the new year there'll be more coming out. Who knows? That will be nice. Well, I'm um, still waiting for news. my. Oh yeah, I'm I'm still waiting to be able to get my uh, N64 controller for Switch Online as a thing. 
was mentioned, still refreshing the Nintendo store, waiting for the news uh, <laughs> when they come back in gosh. stock. Then I can finally play Banjo Kazooie and Majora's Mask is coming soon. So, I, you know, I can replay those with a controller that actually fits the purpose. Let me look forward to Neo Geo arriving. <laughs> Great console. Um, yeah, what else, um, January? Yeah. Um, EGX cancelled. Very sad. Mm, I guess I'll take this one, being the event Go guy. Go for it. Oh, it's um, it's a weird one. We're in discussions with other events, obviously, throughout this year. It's quite interesting to see the shift to online, how much that has impacted physical events. And there is, as we were talking about before, acquisitions and mergers have happened, um, mm. which means that some other events have suffered as a consequence as well. Um, but a lot of the focus now for decision making has been about the broadcast entity and the media exposure that the events can bring as well. So it's quite interesting to see some of the physical events having trouble selling themselves. Um, I, I honestly don't believe that's due to people's COVID concerns anymore. You know, I think people will be wanting to get out and about and, and each event will be perfectly safe to attend and with the requisite things in place. So it's, yeah, it's a shame to see that genuinely. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't affect the, the landscape too much this year, but it's a bit of a, Bit of a wounder to see that that drop, and you know another big British show. It's not that it's been cancelled, but another big British show kind of seemingly not being able to gain gain traction. I think it'll just be twenty twenty two is going to still be a little bit of a wonky year while things start up again. But you know, it's just whether there's the demand or the draw or the partners involved in order to make it happen, make it viable. Um, so yeah, there have been sort of other, um, kind of, you know, sort of like nominally certain events can effectively go ahead in terms of rules and restrictions and legislation, but I think, yeah, we're still in a very sort of like shifting state of, uh, state of affairs, um, currently. So yeah, fingers crossed that come summer, there'll be you know, a bit more appetite or a bit more um, uh, certainty, at least, on these kind of things. I fear you may be right. And um, hopefully more Game of Discos some point soon. Who knows when? Maybe summer is a good time to think about that. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, on with the show then, yeah? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, yeah, so this episode, what we're going to do is go through 2022 and what we're looking forward to in this new year in gaming news. So, kicking things off, we're going to go to Nintendo. So, Nintendo's got a few big releases this year. Um, mostly the dates are not announced yet, but um, we know what the titles are, so here we go. Speed round. First of all, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, that's already out, actually, the open world Pokemon game. Um, heard good things, so we'll see. Um, you guys played that yet? No. No. Nope. Um, no. I, th no I think it's. I think it's the kind of, it's the Pokemon game I might finally be interested in. <laughs> um, as much as I've sort of, you know, I, I always sort of like every generation or maybe sort of ten years or so, I'll try a Pokemon game and I'll enjoy it for a bit and then get bored quite quickly because of the repetitiveness. This actually seems to sell the Pokemon idea, the fantasy of going into an open world and running around and actually trying to collect them all. So the idea sounds great, but will the execution be as good? Yeah, I mean, them. brilliant. Reviews are meant to be reviews are positive. I know there's been a little criticism with regards to the graphics, but those people are just big babies, and they need to. Grow up. <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> See, what they need is the OLED switch. That sort of is. That will save the day. They need their diapers changed. That's what, we'll, that's what they need. Ooh. Ooh. Nappies on diapers are British, for God's sake. I'm appealing to a global audience. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, so on Nintendo as well. Um, but no release dates for these. Bayonetta 3, Splatoon 3, Mario and Rabbids, Sparks of Hope. And Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. 
Any excitement there, gents? Uh, I'm always here for Splatoon. Splatoon 3 is, I guess, the main thing I'm looking forward to, main release of the year in terms of, I guess, the bigger titles. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure it'll be much of the same with a little fresh twist. Uh, but, you know, I'm just here for shiny new versions of the stuff I love. So <laughs> I'm an easy <laughs> mark. Fair enough. Okay, Oaks. So moving on to PlayStation then. Um, and these are announced as of yet. Obviously, the, the, the mergers aren't announced just yet, but that'll be a while. Um, but yeah, a few things for Sony. We have Horizon Forbidden West, the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. That's coming out in February quite soon. I didn't enjoy the first one, so I'm not too excited. <laughs> Anyone like the first one? I played it for a bit, and then I just got bored. So yeah, no to me. Oh dear. All right, Sony, come on, save it here. Um, Gran Turismo 7, Next Gen Racing, yes, anyone? March yes, 2022. I was a massive fan of GT2 and the rubber, it's burnt rubber edition. So you had two discs, four discs, two discs. And one was a scratch and sniff burnt rubber version on the, this is on oh, the original cool. PlayStation. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Massive fan of Gran Turismo games. They're phenomenal. And it's one of those that you kind of, you want to start your own team in and things. I, I love driving games, especially rally, but um, there's something about Gran Turismo that you, you always strive to get the Porsche and then you, oh, I'm going to get that. And yeah, I quite like changing the difficulty settings to very low on them. So that you don't <laughs> have to completely nail it on the first corner. But yeah, no, a big fan of them and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it'll be great if I can get the best console to play it on in the meantime. That would be fun. Tell me, do those games have damage yet? Because one thing that bothered me about Grand Prisma games is where they had no damage. You crash a car yeah. in an epic way and it would look fine. Wow, well, you, you can change the settings. Yeah, you can definitely change the settings on that one. Oh, I'm behind can't the times. Make it visual or physical. Was that due to licensing with the car manufacturers? Uh, do you think? With the damage? I don't thing? think so. No, I think it was just the. Uh, fact of programming it all in it's better to make them yeah. the driving experience i think but no yeah it, you can adjust both and yes very excited for that oh, good to know 18 year old me who brought a steering wheel to play gt2 is kind of chomping at the bit nice how times change yeah thanks I know, what else think. um god of war ragnarok the sequel to the god of war for ps4 and then five um, TBA. Anyone excited for that? I, I've not been a fan of these games since the original trilogy for PS3, because I thought those games were great. They were hack and slash, they were a lot of fun, very crazy and mad, but this one felt a lot more prestigious and not, a, a lot less fun as the trolls, I guess. I don't know. I haven't uh... got around to playing it. It's sort of a bit on my backlog, and I wasn't interested in the original trilogy, but then okay. I heard this one was meant to be all cool and important. Um, but uh, I haven't got around to it yet, so you know, maybe one. If I like that one enough, I'll play the second one, and if I don't, I won't. Fair enough. Yeah, one of those games of the that uh, the memes really took over. <laughs> Sorry, second. Yeah, no, it's, I was a big fan of the original yeah. ones. Uh, great, a lot of fun. Um, and I guess I'll play this, but probably for you know the requisite half an hour ago. Oh yeah, that's that. It's a shame. I, I see my open world gaming time is rather diminished these days, so I, I get less time to do. I suppose it's not open world, but um, I just get less time to play epics and such. I mean, this is like the year of open world because, like, the Pokemon games open world. Uh, uh, what else? Um, Horizon Zero Forbidden West is open world. Uh, lots of Microsoft games open world. Um, mm. Lots of it is this year, so. Saints Row is coming out, hopefully later this Saints year. Saints Row, yes. Open World, Open yes. World. Batman. Eden Ring. Batman. Batman. Without Batman. <laughs> uh, so, actually, that brings us on to quite nicely uh, Microsoft. Um, Starfield, Open World. Space. Uh, Redfall, Open World Vampire Co-op game. <laughs> Lots of Open World stuff. <laughs> vampire Co-op? I'm Sorry, I haven't heard of it. It's a Vampire Co-op game. Yeah, Redfall is called. Um Looks interesting. Uh, summer 2022 for Microsoft. Um, don't know. Yeah. Looks intriguing. The trailer looks quite fun. 
Who knows? Have they got any Keanu Reeves in it? <laughs> if only. That would save the day. It would be that dude that was in that horrible FBI series. Not FBI, he was a sheriff. Wasn't he? Uh, someone's uh, going to know the name of this. Never mind, moving needed. on. <laughs> I... <laughs> Fairly recent. He's a dude that gets into all sorts of things now. He's in, I'm sure he's in the Avengers as well. So it should be Australian, but he isn't. Chris he plays Hemsworth? A... No. Are you talking about Jeremy Constantine? Brother? No. Nope. I'll get there. No, I don't know what you mean. Maybe not. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Um, also <laughs> for Microsoft, um, there's Scorn, a first-person horror survival game. Uh, that's coming out in October 2022, and replaced a 2.5D futuristic sci-fi platformer, also TBA 2022. Mm -hmm. Looks quite fun. I don't know. Quite nice visual style to it. Visual quirks always set a game for me, so that's nice. Um, some games have multiple platforms um, that are not exclusive, um, so let's go through those quickly. Um, there's Dying Light 2 Stay Human, zombie horror game. Anyone fan of the original? No. Didn't play? No. Zomb no. Zombies, can, <laughs> yeah. zombies can leave now. Zombies can go. <laughs> they are a bit overdone, aren't they? <laughs> bring, back bring back dolphins. That's what I say. We need more dolphins in games. <laughs> need more Echo. Echo sequel. Mm. <laughs> okay, next what else. Um, Eden Ring. I've heard good things about this. Um, Elden. George R.R. Martin. Elden, sorry. Thank you. Elden Ring. George R.R. Martin is helping to cut out this, so probably be out in like 10 years time if we're lucky <laughs> i think it's coming out sooner than that but that's uh from software you know from dark souls and bloodborne etc so it looks pretty cool but considering dark souls i got as far as ornstein and smog and spent about 10 to 15 hours just trying to beat that one boss battle <laughs> and i did oh, wow. but then i thought ah, i don't really need to do any more <laughs> Was it worth it? It was worth the sense of accomplishment. Whether it was <laughs> worth the uh, the post traumatic stress disorder is another thing. Justified. There you go. Justified. The well, guy from Justified. Is that he'd to do with vampires? Vampire no, but he'd make a good vampire co-op dude, actor what? guy. Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> sure, if that's his name. <laughs> Alrighty. The original Hitman. Yeah. In the yeah, him first and Spike Muffy yes. together. Him and Spike from uh, Muffy together to, to do that. That'd be wicked. That'd be good. Yeah, so cool. Okay, folks, uh, more games with um, multiple platforms. There's Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. That is a four player co op from the makers of the Batman Arkham games. Um, I'm intrigued, but it's like it's another Batman game without Batman, which is weird. Much like Gotham Knights, which is an open world co-op Batman game, but without Batman. Look, I, there's going to be a three-hour Batman movie coming to cinemas in <laughs> March. If you really need, if you really miss Batman that much, there is enough Batman content out there for people to just enjoy Batman-adjacent things. <laughs> <laughs> Only fair. But again, like, you know... I'm not a fan of Batman. I'm a fan of Batman-adjacent stuff. There's that TV series, Gotham, and it's like, it's a TV series about Batman without Batman. It's very strange. I don't get it. Hey, look, everyone loved that Joker movie for reasons beyond me. Um, <laughs> and that didn't have Batman in it, so... That's true. Fair. Very fair. That was a good film. I quite enjoyed the Gotham series as well, actually. Yeah? To admit. And some of that Joker that. movie, fun fact, the Heath Ledger mm -hmm. one, some of that was filmed beneath the original Earl's Court in the kitchens areas. No way. Down, yeah, down beneath in the underbelly of what was the old Earl's Court that's now probably Vodafone and Costa Coffee head office. Well, I used to work oh. um, on Mallet Street and they have the Senate House building and that's usually closed down for film shoots pretty much every month um, because in Batman Begins they... It's like the courtroom or like in the lobby where Bruce Wayne shoots Joe Chill or something. Anyway, it was dressed up in big Chinese lanterns a couple of years ago um, for the 355, that Jessica Chastain action film that came out in January. So, Oh, yeah, um, I remember that. 
basically there are a lot it's it's one of those things like if you've ever been to warner brothers studio a lot you then once you've been you then recognize that street in every movie <laughs> that comes out mm-hmm. just any kind of time it's just yeah, like bet, yeah oh yeah that street is in a thousand movies and tv shows and it's it's very same for like london shooting locations as well as soon as you know it's just like oh the illusion has been burst <laughs> filming gosh there you go <laughs> <laughs> shout out to granada tv in manchester love that Woo. tv Woo. studio record it's great cool uh, a few more releases um <clears throat> speak up if you're excited for them saints row yes yep. yeah <clears throat> sandbox stuff that could be fun it's a reboot coming out in august <coughs> yeah that looks really good it's meant to be very lo- uh quite quite a lot of different areas as well one of the largest ones i think they've done so yeah, yeah, looks, looks decent. Um, they're gonna. They they said. I think they said it's going to be a bit more toned down than previous ones. Hopefully not. Hopefully not too toned down. Hopefully. I heard that it's like less wacky. Less wacky. So hopefully it still be wacky enough to make you want to play it. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Fair enough. Yeah, um, I think the third the third one or the DLC yeah. Get Out of Hell that yeah. all got a bit crackdowny. Really, Crackdown was a phenomenal game. Yeah. Um, but Saints Row, I always loved the cheeky factor of it and everything, and then it did go a bit far for me, and I was like, mm. but I remember I was doing an event in Paris Games Week once, and the developers there, when they released three, they said it's the exact game they always set out to make, but couldn't make initially. That was their vision with Saints Row three, really. Uh, um, yeah, that was some moons ago. No, uh, yeah, that's Saints Row's great. Yeah, it's good. I think because in the last game, she you became you played as the president. Of the US, so it's bringing it back to like you're just now a member of a gang, like just an ordinary person, basically. So it's good, okay. Kind of bring it back, back to ground level. So yeah, should be fun. I mean, something to play whilst we wait for GTA Six, which will be years and years, won't it? Um, cool. Um, lastly but not least, um, there's Hogwarts Legacy and Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. So two games based on films, um, what were once very popular. Who knows if this still will be, but uh, yeah. Harry Potter and Avatar, open world games. Uh, Does it got yeah. Quidditch? I don't know. I don't care. I don't like this film. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played a Harry... Do you not like them? I, despite, you know, openly detesting the, the reason and everything behind it, I quite like the Harry Potter films and Narnia. So shoot me. I, I mean, like Narnia. Not, I like Narnia, Love but... Narnia. Um, Harry Potter just thing. didn't get into it when I was younger, and uh, I guess mm. one of those things, you know. When you were younger, I don't mind the Harry Potter films. I'm not anti them. Just I've seen a couple of I was them, like, but not fast. But, I was like, yeah. imagine being young at the time when oh, Harry yeah. Potter came out, and everyone yeah. was like, "What's your name, Harry?" Oh, like Harry Potter, and you're like, "Nope, yeah. nope." <laughs> I was first. <laughs> I beat that bastard. So yeah. Murray says, "You shall not Quidditch," isn't it? That's Harry Potter. It must Is be it? tough for all those people called JK now that they have to say, <laughs> no, I'm not that horrible turf on the Twitter. <laughs> Lol, JK. <laughs> yes. Where, it. Is, where happened to JK from Jamiroquai? Has he done anything since? He's not dead, is he? I hope not. not. Living off his millions, I imagine. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no? Did he, get, is, did he go bust or what? I mean, he's he got bust, like yeah. a really fancy car collection. Yeah, I'm sure he has. Good for him. Maybe he's still making music. It's just that we haven't. It's just not really. No one's no one, no really listening to it. <laughs> I met him once in Ministry of Sound in 1999, and he was dancing about it in front. Of, just kind of yeah. looked up, and there's a dude with a hat. I was like, "Oh, it's very quiet. He's very nice, folk. very nice bloke." Ah. Nice. Well, I think that wraps it up for 2022, unless I've missed some stuff. Um, speak already, up. already. Happy New Year, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year yeah. In gaming news. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, well done, yes. Well, mm-hmm. speaking of Christmas. Yes. Um, we had a competition over Christmas. You were supposed to reply to us on Twitter with your favourite Christmas gaming memories, and we had quite a few entries. They were all rather good. Um, anyone had a favourite they could remember? MO75? 
the cannon fodder one. Go on then, read that out. Um, I would if I had it in front of me. But let me. Do uh, I'll read it. I've got it here. You got it. Uh, the tweet from Mo seventy five is that mine has to be getting a big box copy of cannon fodder on the Amiga five hundred sometime in the early nineties and trying to keep jewels and jobs alive till Boxing Day. War was never so much fun. It felt like it trumped the getting the computer the year before. So congratulations, <laughs> well done, Mo seventy five. Oh, there you are. You're our winner, by the way. Um, notable mentions also for um, Buckmeister General, who said playing Overcooked with my mum and um, annoying her by setting the kitchen on fire with a flame blower. And um, a Sobe Tech, <laughs> who said best gaming memory was um, having the whole family playing Connect 4. Mm. That felt quite nice. Oh. IRR yeah. Games FTW. Yeah, so thanks to everyone that entered that. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got some um, goodies on the way to you, um, MO75, um, the ones we put on Twitter, the um, mini figs, courtesy of Rory. Mini figs. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How kind of him. Aww. So, yeah, thanks to everyone well that entered, and um, yeah, a lot to look forward to for this year. Let's yeah. hope so. Yeah. I'll, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll do stuff IRL. That would be nice. I'm sure there will be. So There's does anyone have any gaming resolutions for 2022? <laughs> 720p. You should probably play some stuff and finish it as opposed to leaving it on the shelf. But, uh... mm. Yeah, I think my main goals is to actually play Mario Odyssey, which I've had since release and, and still not nice. put it in my Switch. Um, nice. And... I've also still not really finished Breath of the Wild because I got that on Wii U and I haven't had that plugged in for the past year because it's the only game I play on it. So um, right. I need to dust off the Wii U and and uh, finish that one off. Um, but yeah, general diving into the backlog and just, uh, yeah, maybe focusing more on some indie titles too. Just I've got a whole bunch which I've picked up on my switch and i just need to dive straight into them and actually boot them up and give them a go rather than them just sort of like falling down the uh, list of games that i have in my uh, switch library Bye -bye. speaking enough. of indie titles there's yeah. also just on another events note there's also wasd which is what rest essentially was as a show if everybody remembers that yeah, uh, that's at the start of April, he says. Oh, that's, um, happen that's, that's happening. That's oh, cool. happening IRL Amazing. in the same location that Rest was before. So, yeah, indie titles, if you're into indie titles and other titles, then you should pop along and check it out. I think we'll have this out before. Then. Yeah, way ahead of that. I think there's I like a, so. yeah, I think in the kind of lineup actually in 2022, like a few indie titles of note that uh i'm looking forward to there's Oli Oli world from roll seven that's coming out imminently um a sort of more expansive version of the Oli Oli games uh with a very nice looking art style there's a uh, bomb rush cyber funk which is a spiritual successor to jet set radio my one of my all-time favorite games and this fun. seems to be you know carrying the torch for that and there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which hearts back to the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, arcade really? game. I was about to say, does it actually have turtles in, or is it turtles adjacent material? <laughs> it's got, it's got, it's got, <laughs> it's got at least four. Oh, wow, <laughs> at least four of the turtles. Four whole turtles. Wow. But I think some of the team uh, behind that also did the Scott Pilgrim video game, um, and it's been published by Dot Emu, who released Streets of Rage 4. Um, oh. So it's got good credentials, and it looks like it's harking back to that side scrolling classic arcade beat em up style era with all your 90s nostalgia wrapped up in it, too. Cool. Awesome. Sounds nice. good. Yeah, sounds really good. Um, yeah, one thing I'm trying to play play um, this year is Alan Wake. I never played the original, and I've uh, got the remaster, just gathering dust, and I need to start that and play through that. I've heard good things. So. Yeah, I uh, finished that off just before Christmas, 
um, good... and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it was good. It's it's. Uh, I think there are certain aspects of it where it's just like, okay, I understand that this game is ten years old. Um, <laughs> okay. So quite a bit of gaming has gone since. So maybe some of the stuff in it, which you know was kind of fresh and new at the time, is maybe not so much now. But I think there's still some really interesting mechanics and methods of storytelling which still feel pretty unique so it's definitely uh, a pretty cool experience and the remastered version includes the dlc which is kind of like essential as well so play it all and let us know what you think i'm actually started playing control also from remedy uh oh, yeah. that's what we've just um begun playing um not got very far yet but i like the vibe i like the the story just waiting for sort of the gameplay to really kind of kick in and um uh you know fully be in control i guess that's uh you and your wife is on your gaming channel uh we're not streaming that but we did stream oh, you're that. not oh no but we did stream we did stream alan wake uh when we played that through but don't watch that harry because spoilers <laughs> <laughs> i shan't but do you want to plug your channel whilst you're here um yeah i don't think there's anything that we're doing currently but it was uh noobly wed that's n double zero b l y underscore weds like newly weds but with um noob (laughs) (laughs) such japes um yeah so we played resident (laughs) evil village on that and alan wait remastered but we haven't picked a new game to play on that yet fair enough Um, Excellent. There's a new Pokemon game coming out, apparently. That it's already out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed, I've missed a joke, haven't I? I no. no, but we, we have been playing as well uh, The Good Life, which is a game I, I backed on Kickstarter from Swery, who uh, was the creator of Deadly Premonition. And this new game um, is set in uh, the happiest town in the world, which just so happens to be one in the Lake District. So it's really interesting to have like a Japanese developer and studio team setting it in like this little village in the Lake District. Um, So all the kind of like shops and things have, you know, very British paraphernalia and all the pubs and stuff that you go to have British food and drink. Um, but the main point of the game is that you're a photojournalist from New York who's stuck in this town having to uh, get back out of debt by taking photographs. But it just so happens this town has a secret and that's everyone turns into cat or dog uh, come midnight or something. So you basically play as a human, a cat or a dog every now and then. It sounds like Leisure Suit Larry crossed with everybody's gone to the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sounds liking the sound of it. <clears throat> it's not quite as horny. <laughs> That's the latter. I think Miss Knowles. Knowles, sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah, shouts. Actually, you've just reminded me. Um, I was really on Kickstarter actually, um, quite a while ago. Was Pray for the Gods, and that's just come out for um, consoles and PC. And um, yeah, I played it a bit, and it's um, it's quite interesting. It's like a spiritual successor to Shadow of the Colossus, and um, yeah, it's quite mm. interesting. So I will report back next month. Very cool. Cool. Um, my gaming resolutions are to finally finish Fallout 4, which I've been playing forever and literally still not finished it. I could hope, so spoiler alert, but I couldn't get over the fact that um, my son in the game, in Fallout 4, the character's son, grows up to be running the, in, in, the Institute, which is like the evil, the evil, evil guys in the game. So I kind of, that threw me for six. And then uh, finished Yakuza Kiwami right on the end boss battle. And also the my last resolution is to visit the largest gaming arcade in Europe, which happens to be in Manchester, which I'll be doing. There next you time. go. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Don't, don't miss that. Yeah. Exciting year of the podcast yeah. ahead. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. And, um, yeah, we'll be back next month. Don't forget, you can contact us on the socials. We are at Gamer Disco everywhere. We are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and I believe we also are on Spotify. Yeah.
I think we are. Yeah. Yeah. And YouTube, you right. obviously. And YouTube, YouTube yes. YouTubers. Yeah, that's where you prefer to listen to us. I think the MySpace is currently down for maintenance. Yeah, MySpace is down at the moment, but you know Bebo's back. <laughs> Justin Bebo. Yeah. No, Bebo is in the social network. Bebo's not back, is it? Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> Who bought wow. it? Was it Murdoch? I have no idea. Who Some bought Bebo? Back. Oh. Ken Dodds that dog dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, you guys, this has been fun. And on that note, cheers, Catch guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye. That that felt better. Yeah. I believe Ken Dodd's dead dog is actually dead. Who's Ken Dodd? Go on, show your age. I know who Ken Dodd is. I know Ken sure Dodd is do. dead, but I don't understand what you're saying. Ken Dodd's dad's dog's dead. Ken Dodd's dad's dog's dead. <laughs> I don't get the joke. <laughs> it isn't really fun. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's what makes it even worse. <laughs> <sighs> Love job. Enjoy the peace. And on that note. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some food now. But I will do tomorrow. I'm gonna try not to break myself. No. Yeah. Have you been... yeah, don't 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 do that because then you can't ski anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Which no. How many yeah, have you been makes... skiing much? Have you had many ski days or not? No, I got two trips planned, but I can't. <laughs> Sorry, but I meant Swanee. The one who's actually next to the Yeah, fuck you and your sling, Harry. Um, (laughs) I have been out a total of four times in three weeks. So, yeah, it's uh, been tough. I've had lots of work to do as well. That's the thing. So, it has been a a workly day. Holly, Holly work. Working from home, but in a different location. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. So, definitely getting out tomorrow. Excellent. Cool. All right. Bye bye. Where you are, (laughs) Sony? No, I've just farted. Okay. (laughs) Thank you for wafting it our way. (laughs) Yes, all the way through to the (laughs) UK.